everybody, this is me, Adela Ray, and, well, I'm here, and, um, I'm going to tell you, you know what I'm going to do? Today, I'm just a little bored, so I'm going to ask my backpack to come with me and take me to the park. Yeah, I'm going to ask my backpack to take me to the park. You ever seen my backpack before? I'll show it to you. Look, there it is. It's coming out of the floor. Okay. Now, ooh, I, I smell a snack. Let's see. Hey, what's it do? Oh! Hey! Ah, I wonder where Adele Ray is. Yeah, I, I'm looking for him. Uh, let's see. I wonder where he could be. You think? No. I don't know. Ah. Hmm. I'm wondering where could a Delaware be? That's my cousin from Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, hey, look! It's a backpack. And it's open. I wonder what's inside. Let's see. Hey! That's the... What? What? Hey, Adela Ray's in here. Okay, Adela Ray, what's happening? We're inside of a backpack. We're going to the park. Okay, I guess that'll be okay. I wonder where it's going to take us. Yeah, the backpack spit me out. I wonder where I could be. Hey! There's a sign that's Harlan Park in Baltimore. Hey, the backpack took me to Baltimore. I'm from Harlem, New York. It took me to Harlem Park in Baltimore. Adela Ray! We're a long way from New York. What were you thinking? Oh, why did I get in the backpack in the first place? I'll never know. Oh, boy. Am I going to be in trouble? Hey, they're in Harlem Park in Baltimore, Maryland. That's a long way from Harlem, New York. But, you know, it's a place where the culture is very rich and it's a large African-American community in Baltimore, Maryland. You know... I can tell you about Harlem Park and what happened in Harlem Park, too. They call this place the Highway to Nowhere. You want to understand why? Yeah, sure you do. Okay, I'll tell you all about it. And I'll send my good friend, Bob, the Groundhog, to bring them back from Harlem Park in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah. Doesn't a groundhog come and help you out? The name Harlem comes from a Dutch merchant by the name of Adrian Vallec, who arrived in Baltimore soon after the Revolutionary War. He established a home outside of the city in the late 1700s. Vallec's Harlem estate featured an extensive garden of flowers and fruit trees imported from the finest nurseries in Europe. In the 19, early 19th century, Dr. Thomas Edmondson took over the property and kept up the garden, sharing his ex expertise as president of the Maryland Horticulture, Horticulture Society. In 1857, a group of nearby property owners donated the land to the city to establish Lafayette Square, a new public park just a few blocks northwest of Edmondson's home. The successful development of Mount Vernon Place and Franklin Square encouraged local property owners to place parks at the center of any new suburban development. Now, during the Civil War, after the bloody battles of Antietam and Gettysburg, Union soldiers from New York and Pennsylvania spent weeks recovering from their injuries at Lafayette Barracks and Hicks General Hospital just east of Harlem Park. 
Union Caps and West Baltimore also played a role in unraveling an unraveling of slavery as enslaved blacks escaping from bondage found shelter among northern troops during the early years of the war. Local free blacks built something called earthworks for the Union Army to protect against a Confederate attack. 1864, hundreds of formerly enslaved men came to Baltimore to form the 4th U.S. Colored Infantry organized at Barony or Byrony Barracks, which is today Druid Hill Park. After the Civil War ended in 1865, the city swelled in size with entrepreneurs building in West Baltimore. It doubled the size of Baltimore. In Lafayette Square, the city replanted trees and flowers and rebuilt winding walks. West Baltimore parks became attractive destination for wealthy residents seeking to take a breath of fresh air and escape from Baltimore's crowded downtown. Dedicated in 1876, Harlem Square brought uh, even more new residents to the area. In the 1870s and 1880s, developer Joseph Cohn erected hundreds of row houses and blocks around a Harlem Park. Yeah, the houses here look smaller than the ones in New York, but, um, hey, why am I talking about houses? Where is the park? That's what I want to know. Looks like I can play baseball. You know, my backpack. I think my backpack can play too. We have to wait for a hedgehog, a groundhog, excuse me, to come pick us up and take us back to Harlem. I hope it's not a long trip. I hope not. Hey, tell me more about Harlem Park. Sure I can. I can tell you more about Harlem Park in Baltimore, Maryland. Lafayette Square also has been called Church Square for the unrivaled, unrivaled number of churches located around the park. In 1869, the Lafayette Square Association enticed the Episcopal Church of the Ascension to move to the northeast corner of the park. Ascension's Reverend Calloway argued the church should lead rather than follow the population into the city's fashionable new neighborhoods. Grace Methodist Episcopal Church began to work on a new church on the south side of the square in 1871. Bishop Cummings Memorial completed a new church on the west side of the square in 1878, followed by the Lafayette Square Presbyterian in 1879. In the late 1920s, in the early 1930s, these white congregations sold their buildings to African American congregations. Metropolitan United Methodist Church was the first to move, leading a ceremonial march from their old church on Orchard Street to their new church on Lafayette and Lafayette Square in 1928. And uh, St. John AME moved from Lexington Street in 1929, uh, St. John's Episcopal in 1932, and Emmanuel Christian Church moved from Cal uh, Calhoun Street or Calhoun Street in 1934. In 1881, the Maryland School for the Blind was opened at Edmondson and Fulton Street. And in this same building, it housed a Small, unknown college at that time, but everyone knows about it now. It's called Morgan State University. Before, and this was happened before the school moved to Northeast Baltimore in 1917. In 1892, the grammar school, uh, 18, opened on the corner of Harlem and Monroe Street. In the early 1900s, residents 
and Harlem Park fought to exclude African Americans to purchase homes by imposing deed restrictions on local property owners and harassing black homeowners or household owners who tried to buy homes around the park. By the 1920s, however, the city's growing black middle class successfully gained access to more desirable properties in Harlem Park. Many of the area's white residents moved away to newer suburb communities like Rogano Heights and Walbrook by the early 1930s. The neighborhood was largely African American. Black doctors and lawyers and grand houses lived alongside working class tenants and boarding houses and smaller alley houses. Harlem Park became an integral part of the black community that grew to include homes, churches, and, bu and businesses from North Avenue to Franklin Street and Utah Place to Fulton Avenue. And that's where you guys are. You're in a community that's rich with a lot of African American heritage. Um, I have to go back to work now. I hope that ground uh, that groundhog gets up there to help you guys out. I hope I'm in the right place. Is this Harlem Park in Baltimore? Oh, uh, let me look around. Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm Bob the Groundhog. I'm here to get a Delray and Calvin. Have you guys seen them? Yeah, I have to take them back. Harlem Park in Baltimore. Wow, what a place. Yeah, I can tell you there's some famous people from people from Harlem Park in Baltimore. That's right. Well, one famous person is Reverend George Freeman Bragg. He was with St. James Episcopal Church. Reverend George Bragg may be a little may be little known today, but he served as pastor of St. James Church for over 40 years. His visionary leadership of St. James is matched only by his legacy as a co-founder of the African American newspaper, a historian and a political advocate, his life and work reflected the growth, growing strength of Baltimore's African American community in the late, well, in, in, actually in the early 1900s. He was born on January 25th, 1863 in North Carolina. Bragg's early life was shaped by the Civil War and Reconstruction. Ordained as a deacon in Virginia, in 1887, Bragg entered the priesthood in 1888 and arrived in Baltimore in 1891. With a passion of foster for fostering independent leadership within the black church, he joined uh, St. James Church and was 66 years old at that time, and it was located in downtown Baltimore, on the corner of Saratoga and Guilford Avenue. In 1901, uh, Bragg led the church to a new building in northwest Baltimore at Park Avenue in Preston when the middle class African American and his congregation continued to move further west. Bragg moved St. James Church to Lafayette Square in 1932 where they celebrated their first service on Easter morning. Reverend Bragg lived on the square and remained active in the city politics and uh, well, city politics and civic life until his death in 1940. Hey, I have a question. Um, I heard some information about a lady. They called her Lady Law. I wonder what could that be about? Hey, I gotta find this groundhog too, so he can take me back to New York. Have you seen the groundhog? I'm looking. Keep 
looking. Oh, gotta find the groundhog. Somebody mentioned Lady Law. Wow, I can tell you about Lady Law and who that was in Harlem Park. Yeah, she was a very special person. I can tell you all about her. Let me tell you about her. Mrs. Violet White, uh, she was uh, born, well, actually, she was on in December 3rd of 1937. The Baltimore City Police Department assigned Mrs. Violet White to the Northwestern District, making Mrs. White the first black police officer uh, in there. And forty, and she was there for forty years. She was a former uh, teacher and mother of four children. She was not your typical uh, police officer. She earned a nickname, Lady Law, putting countless hours in. She worked sixteen-hour days for over thirty, uh, over a period of thirty years. Uh, Ms. White had deep roots in the community, and she was the daughter of Daniel G. Hill, a prominent pastor at Bethel AME Church, and she was a graduate of Douglas High School and Coppin State College, together with her husband, George, a Baltimore school principal. She lived at 625 North Carrollton Avenue. She refused to carry a gun and was passionate about her work for protecting the children, and she was concerned about juvenile offenders. Well, that's who she was. And there was another person who was a politician. I'm still looking for these guys. Have you seen them? Where could they be? I have to dig a hole to Harlem. Yeah. Oh, anyway, let me tell you about these two guys. One's name was Clarence Mitchell. And the other is Perrin Jane Mitchell. Yeah, I'll tell you all about them. Well, the Mitchell brothers were born and raised on Carrollton Street in Harlem Park. Clarence and Perrin J. Mitchell took on the challenge of fighting for civil rights well beyond their own community. As a young reporter for the Afro American newspaper, Clarence covered the story of a 1933 lynching on Maryland's eastern shore and came back to Baltimore transformed into an activist. He became the NAACP's chief lobbyist on Capitol Hill and was known as the 101st senator for his hard and for his hand or his hard work to win the influence of senators to get some things done. Perrin J. Mitchell was the first black graduate of the University of Maryland Law School and taught at Morgan State University, elected as the first black member of Congress from, a, from any southern state since Reconstruction. Perrin Mitchell uh, helped to found the Congressional Black Caucus. I'll look over here for a while, see if I can find these guys. If you see them, let me know. Oh, hey, I know where I am. I'm by the house of Eugene Phillips, Dr. Eugene Phillips. For nearly 50 years, Dr. Phillips worked as an obstetrician and gynecologist for families in Harlem Park and across West Baltimore. She was from New York City. Dr. Phillips moved to Baltimore in the 1940s where she married Dr. Towson Woodward Anderson in 1946. They turned their handsome three-story Edmondson Avenue row house into a home where they had a private practice and worked, they worked, both worked at Provident Hospital. Uh, their neighbors made sure no one except Dr. Phillips or her husband parked in front of their house so that they could always find a spot after returning home from caring for mothers 
and children. Ah! I'm getting bored. I'm learning a lot about African American history and I'm learning something about Harlem Park and Baltimore. I'm still looking for... Oh, look! There he is! There he is! Uh, I've been looking for you. Alvin, and where's your cousin, Adele Ray? Oh, he's over there. I'll go get him. Okay. Uh, you better go... What do you want me to do? You better go get Adele Ray so I can take you guys back to Harlem. We have to go with the groundhog. Wow. Hey, I wonder where the highway to nowhere is. Well, this was the sad part about Harlem Park in Baltimore. It was a great community for African Americans. It still is. And it featured a lot of different things. Well, this project, which was supposed to go from help people and cars go from east to west Baltimore, it never went anywhere. But before it did, they uh, tore up Harlem Park and destroyed a lot of homes. So uh, now there's a big highway that really doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, I'll tell you about it. Baltimore's extensive streetcar network tied to Harlem Park's neighborhoods across the city with regular service along Edmondson Avenue. Built in the 1940s, the fast-growing suburbs and increasing number of drivers inspired city planners to push for the construction of an east-west expressway through Harlem Park and the neighborhoods along Franklin Street. West Baltimore residents responded by organizing relocation action movement and joined with the anti-highway activists from East Baltimore to form the movement against destruction in the late 1960s. Despite growing opposition, city, the city demolished over a dozen blocks of homes and businesses between downtown and to the present site of the West Baltimore Mark uh, Station. It's a train station in Baltimore. In the early 1970s, the highway officials built nearly two miles along segment of the planned highway, but mounting protests finally forced the city to abandon efforts to continue construction through Greater Rosemont and Lincoln Park. The one mile stretch of expressway that was completed with such controversy and such cause uh, was called the Road to Nowhere or the Highway to Nowhere. One of the most ambitious elements of the urban renewal plan for Harlem Park was the city's goal of demolishing hundreds of four to five uh, bedroom or five bedroom story uh, houses on Woodward Street, Saint, um, excuse me, Vincent Street, and other back alleys. Decades of neglect created difficult conditions for tenants. Some houses still lack indoor toilets. This was uh, some of the older houses or other plumbing. The neighborhood's urban renewal plan that was adopted in 1961 envisioned replacing these houses with 29 small parks and playgrounds. The demolition started in the late 1960s, requiring the relocation of hundreds of local residents. Uh, but the development of the parks proceeded very slow. Debate within the city's agencies should uh, actually it should make should they maintain the park or contribute to the to the uh, disuse of the park. Neighborhood residents also reflected that the culture of socializing on the front steps of their Baltimore row homes conflicted 
being uh, the isolation from having, I guess, some parks around in the back of their houses. Well, that's the history of Harlem Park, at least some of it. But Harlem Park is coming back. It's going. It's a lot of great things and new projects that are coming into Harlem Park. And this time, it'll be done with a lot more great care than what's been done in the past. So Harlem Park is making a great, great comeback. And that's the story about Harlem Park where you are. Yeah, I hope the groundhog's helping you guys. All right, everybody, I have to help these guys and I've dug the hole down here. So we're gonna be digging our way back to Harlem. Okay, I'm gonna go down first. Did you guys see the, where, where the groundhog went? He went down a hole. I hope it, wow! Okay, now I have to find my way. There's a hole around here somewhere. Um, hope I can find it because I, it's going to take me back to Harlem. That back, back of mine's got the park wrong. Can you believe? Uh, I wonder what that is. Not too sure. I can't believe that backpack got me into the wrong place. You shouldn't trust your backpack to do things. Yeah. Well, there's the backpack right there. Okay, so I've got to find my... Whoa! Thanks for pushing me down a hole.